Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis bringing you a new Unity 3D game development video. And today I wanted to show you how you can make an extremely easy and simple sun and day and night cycle system in Unity 3D. And uh, it's going to be so incredibly easy that you really don't need to do much code at all. But uh, let's go ahead and dive in and show you how it works. Okay, so to start out, um, I've got all this set up here. I've just got some squares, actually, some cubes that I've kind of reshaped and made and all this stuff. Um, so the setup really doesn't matter much. What you've got here, not a big deal. The only key aspects that we want to focus on is having a skybox material and you've applied that skybox material to the background. Now, how do we do this? Well, if you've seen a previous video, all you have to do is right click and then go into create and go to material. And once you're in material, we'll just call this one, I don't know, red sky. We'll make a red sky. And when you're in there with red sky set, you're going to go into shader and you're going to go to skybox and you're going to do procedural. So the thing that you want to focus on with the skybox is making sure you still have a sun. You can always say no sun, but you can do high quality, simple or none. I'm going to go ahead and say high quality. Sun side doesn't really matter. It's just going to affect the size of your sun. If you look at this here, you should be able to rotate and find your sun and you can kind of give it a size that you're comfortable with, but at the max, it's still not going to be terribly huge. Um, but then the sun size convergence, uh, you can kind of see that's what that does. Make it real small. Now, a key part though, when making this procedural skybox is you can change the, si the thickness of your atmosphere, which is really going to have a dramatic effect on what's going on with your sun. So, um, and when it's going to the background, so you can have a pretty thick atmosphere and, uh, it's going to not look, you know, it will look a little crazy. Um, but the lower you have it, you know, the less you're going to see in terms of the colors and it's going to have some dramatic effects. So play around with this. This really does have an effect on a lot of things. So sky tint though, I said, I wanted to make a red sky. I'll try and make it as red as possible. It doesn't really get there quite perfectly, but once you change like, uh, the thickness of the atmosphere, you can dramatically affect that. And then the ground, you can make that whatever color. Um, I like to just kind of leave it. I don't like leaving it gray, but you can make it whatever. So I'm going to make it pink. And now the key thing to remember is once you have that set, you need to make sure that this particular procedural uh, skybox is applied. So all you have to do is drag it onto your skybox. You can see here this has already had a dramatic effect on the level itself, it's changed the coloring. So I'm going to go ahead and play this again and let you see what it looks like once we've done that change. So if we look around here, the sun still moves. I didn't have to change anything. And you might be wondering, how is that possible? We'll talk about that in just a second. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put my blue sky back. I actually prefer this a bit. And we'll talk about the setup with the lighting. So one thing I've done, if your sun is away, you don't have much lighting, it's gonna look black. So I've added some ambient light to the scene as well. That ambient light helps to kind of give you some edges and some details. So at nighttime, you actually have something you can still look at. It's in that way you have some level of, of ability to see what's going on in the scene um, instead of just one giant black, you know, void. So I've got two ambient lights actually. One's kind of red, one's kind of blue. So we have this, um, sun here. I've named it sun, but it's the default light, right? So you've got default light. You've got, you know, you've got your color and your intensity. Um, I lowered the intensity on the ambient lights here. And I also took no shadows. You can see here just as a, you know, so you know that, that you need soft shadows for your sun and your intensity at one. That's the default the ambient lights. I did put them down to lower intensity and change their color and no shadows. Um, but the sun has shadows, soft shadows. You can make those hard if you want. And it has an intensity of one. So that makes the scene itself a little bit brighter as well. You can see here, if I click on both of these and I disable them, you can see the scene does get a little bit darker, um, but those ambient lights help a lot. So, okay, now the important part. With that sun set here, you see I have a sun move script. It's on the directional light, but that directional light alone isn't what makes this sun in the procedural skybox move. What makes it move is under window, rendering, lighting, this box here 
you're going to have environment and your skybox material needs to be the blue sky, which that is just by dropping it on the background. Um, but your sun, sort has, sun source has to be that sunlight. So that's the one we drop in there. You can pick any of the lights you want to. But the key point is, if you look at this, there's the sun. If I click on the sun, that procedural skybox, let's go find that light right here. See, if I change the rotation of that X value on this particular light, the sun is going to follow it. And obviously the shadows will too, but that does affect the sun in the sky on the procedural skybox. And you can see as it sets, it changes color. And then as it's gone, you see everything's dark now. And the only thing lighting it is the ambient light. So if we turn off these ambient lights now, and we just say we have nothing, you can see it's very dark, except for the fog. The fog is still on, and that's also under rendering, our window, rendering, lighting, and then the environment, um, we have a fog value. If I turn that off, you see it's really just pure red now. Um, but I have a little bit of light fog and I've changed the value to be very low density uh, and things like that. So now if we turn those ambient lights back on, our, our values, it looks a little bit better. It looks like a little bit of a darker, you know, kind of misty night scene. So we, we do our rotation on the sun again. Now we bring that back in the sky. And there we go. So how do we make that sun move? Well, I'm just doing a next value rotation. So um, you can rotate it any way you want to, but the script is going to be really simple. So now that we have the setup, let's go look at that script. So really the sun move is just this transform. No other, no other functions at all. Just update. We have transform.rotate and then I have it as 0.1 F. If I want to slow it down, I might do 0.5 F and I'm going to save that run it again, and the sun's going to move at about half the speed. It's moving a little bit more slowly, and I've got this guy here. We can move around, but the sun's moving, and we can follow that. So, um, and that's pretty much it. One other thing we could do with this code, instead of just having this transform.rotate um, there, we could actually go in here and set like a public uh, vector3 we'll just say my rotation and that's it. We'll just leave it like that. And then we're going to be able to put those values in there in the editor because we made it public. But then we can just also here, instead of having the 0.5F and the 000, we can say my rotation and call it good. That's all we have to do. Now, if we uh, save that file and close our editor, we now should see like sun move here and it's updated. It's going to be zero again, but we're going to say 0.5 zero, zero, we'll just leave it at zero. We'll rotate the Y, which would probably change not much of anything because the angle's not very different. Let's, well, actually, let's see what happens. We'll just do point one, play around with it a bit and see what happens to our sun. And yeah, it just goes around in a circle around us and you can see it's just zooming around the Y axis instead. So you can apply that kind of logic to virtually any object you want to spin, rotate, whatnot. Um, but since our sun's moving, and going off that angle, that'll match. And I really, now I kind of want to know what happens if we move Z, I don't know, one. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea what it's going to do. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, that's, uh, that's cool. So anyway, um, <laughs> that's everything I have for you guys today. Uh, I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.